the action that we're going to see in this chapter of alkynes is the use of acetylide ion. This reaction can be very useful when trying to extend carbon chains and to add carbons to uh, an existing molecule. So in, in the use of, um, of the acetylide, what we're going to do is we're going to start with this terminal alkyne that can be deprotonated using a strong enough base, and that will give us the acetylide ion. Now that, ion, that an ion is very reactive, it can act as a base or it can act as a nucleophile as well, and it's very reacting, reactive because it has a negative charge that it's uh, localized in that carbon and that carbon is going to be extremely reactive because as you know, carbon is not comfortable having a negative charge because it's not very electronegative. But it's so remember what we will get is this molecule right here that can act as a nucleophile and now the nucleophile will attack the electrophile and that will form a new bond. Um, it's important that you recognize which bases are good to the protonate uh, the initial, the initial uh, alkyl, alkyne, right? And a base needs to be strong enough. And for us to know if it's strong enough, remember that the triple bond, the acetylide, sorry, the triple, this terminal uh, triple bond, it has a pKa of 25. If that has a pKa of 25, we need to look for a base which uh, conjugate acid has a higher number than that. So for example, NH2- or H-, they have really high pKa's. If we have bases, because you know OH- is a base or OR- minus is a base as well, with, a, PK, with uh, a conjugate acid that has a pKa below 25, then those are not going to be strong enough to the protonate that hydrogen at the end of the alky alkyne, right, that terminal alkyne. And so here we have another example. So we have the, the triple bond, the terminal triple bond, and we have the NH2 minus that comes and attacks. And we've seen these reactions many times. I've asked you these reactions in the exams. And the question was something like, is NH2- strong enough to the protonate this acid? And then what you would do is that you will look at the pKa's of the two, or you would compare the two conjugate bases, either by using the pKa values or ARIO, if you were looking at the conjugate bases. You can refer to the chapter in... Um, acid bases to remind uh, to remember this and so in this case because this is a stronger acid and this is a weaker acid the reaction is going to move forward what it means is that NH2- minus is a strong enough base to the protonate this hydrogen right here because the reaction will move forward right because of that the reaction will move forward now if we do the same using OH- minus you see if we compare the two acids we have here one acid of 25 and here one acid of 15.7 uh, that's water the the equilibrium will move backwards if the equilibrium move backwards it means the equilibrium is not likely to happen so now that we've identified which ones are some of the strong bases that we can use to create or to synthesize the acetylide ion, um, we remember the base will come get the proton, will give us this acetylide ion that can now act as a nucleophile or as a base. And so if we have a primary alkyl halide such as this one, the nucleophile, remember it's a strong nucleophile, primary alkyl halides, they always do SN2 reactions, so it's just nucleophile, electrophile, living group, SN2 reaction, this, we saw these ones a while ago, but uh, at this point you should be very comfortable with this type of reaction. So again, nucleophile, electrophile, living group, it's an SN2 type reaction because we have a strong nucleophile, that's a nucleophile that has a negative charge, we have a primary alkyl halide, and we have a good living group. So you see here we have a couple of examples in where we start with a primary alkyl halide and we use two different acetylide um, 
anions, right? So now here, nucleophile, electrophile, living group. And so, as I was saying before, this reaction can very can be very helpful when you're trying to extend your chain. So here we start with two carbons and we end up with four right here. And here, you see, it's even more uh, useful. You see, here we are adding, uh, we are ending with a total of 14 carbons. Okay, so that happens when we have a primary alkyl halide. But when we have secondary and tertiary alkyl halides, because this molecule is already so crowded and the acetylide ion is big enough, what we will end up getting are elimination reactions. And they will be E2 reactions, meaning that they will happen in just one step. The base will come, get the hydrogen, and then it will collapse, giving us the... Um, the alkene, right? And that happens because this molecule is big and this molecule is also big, so steric hindrance is preventing that SN2 reaction. And as you know, SN2 reactions and E2 reactions often compete because one same molecule, such as this one right here, can either act as a base or as a nucleophile. And so it's, uh, it's, we have to evaluate other factors, like in this case the, the, um, the alkyl halide, to know if we're going to get an SN2 or an E1. So here we have one, exam one another example, right? So here we have one triple bond. It's a terminal triple bond, so we have an H available that when treated with Na plus, NH2 minus, right, the first step is going to be that acid-base step, the deprotonation, that will give us the acetylide ion. When we have a primary alkyl halide, such as this one, we will do an SN2 reaction. But if we have a secondary or a tertiary one, what is going to happen is that instead of acting as a nucleophile, as it did in this side, it will act as an electrophile. Sorry, not as an electrophile, as a base, right? So here is a nucleophile here, and here it will act as a base on this route right here. And if this acetylate ion acts as a base, we will get an elimination reaction. So we will end up with a double bond. The acetylide ion is, use, is used often in chemistry. So here we have this step here where we have um, an SN2 reaction, or we can also see, in, in, or right here, we have another SN2 reaction, um, the, the acetylide, so that the alkene here, we have a base, and then that base will deprotonate, giving us the acetylide, and then that will react with the bromine right here, and that will extend the chain right here, right? So uh, by mixing the triple bond, the terminal triple bond with the base, that will give us the acetylide. Here I'm showing the acetylide already, and then that acetylide can come and attack the BR, right? And another reaction that is interesting with the acetylide ion is the uh, opening of an epoxide, because remember that epoxides can be open both in acidic conditions or in basic conditions. In this case, uh, in the presence of a nucleophile, it's going to uh, be like opening an epoxide under uh, these basic conditions, right? So we have here the epoxide that acts as a, sorry, not the epoxide, the acetylide that acts as a nucleophile comes here and attacks the epoxide on the less substituted side. This one right here is the less substituted side and because of a, because of a steric hindrance, this side is not going to be attacked right here. So the acetylide comes and it opens up, right? So it's an SN2 type reaction because we have a nucleophile, we have an electrophile, and we have a living group, and that will open up. But here we have a molecule that is not neutral, and by using water, right? So right here, the last step is going to be that O minus coming and getting one, um, one hydrogen from the water, and that's how we get the alcohol. You see, this is a very interesting way of extending the chain. Here we have two, actually four carbons, and in our final product, we added two extra carbons to that molecule. Another, so here we have another example. Remember that uh, epoxides 
are usually uh, with both uh, they are on the same side of the molecule and when the uh, nucleophile attacks it will attack from behind and what will happen is that the nucleophile ends up attached from behind so that's why we have a dash right here and when these epoxide opens we end up with the alcohol pointing up right so again there's a backside attack, right? It's an SN2 reaction, backside attack. The top part of this molecule is crowded. So when the nucleophile comes and attacks from behind, the epoxide will open up. And so the alcohol stays in the same position that it was, but the nucleophile comes from behind. So this will give us this molecule. Also remember that because this molecule is symmetrical, the attack could also come from the other side right here. And so the exact same thing would happen. We form this bond right here, and we form this bond right here, and the two are enantiomers, right? Both centers are flipped, are swapped. So what it means is that these two molecules end up being enantiomers.